everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Thursday, March 10th, 2022, a little after 3 p.m. Eastern. We have a reverse aging health call tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Look at this very moment as the main course. Indulge yourself deeply in the delicious, delectable moment of the now. Savor the divine ingredients that your past memories and future thoughts are offering you today. Totally consume this moment of now so that you may be consumed by the now. Sit and devour this ordinary experience of life because it is an absolutely scrumptious experience. Notice how each bite is fresh, brand new, and unlike any other. Savor the others in your life, yet be sure to enjoy the richest and creamiest snack of them all. In other words, <clears throat> stay always in the now. A lot of us, I think most of us are, sometimes we get into the habit of wanting to control all the time and learning how to let go of control to, so you can really enjoy this life. To find peace of mind, simply resign as the general manager of the universe. To find peace of mind, simply resign as the general manager of the universe. Every day of your life is a new opportunity to deepen in consciousness and expand your understanding of who you are think you are. Each new moment is a chance to release any limiting ideas you have about yourself and start creating a broader perspective on reality. This approach simply results in manifesting a much more enjoyable experience of reality. Who we perceive ourselves to be is what determines the actions we take and how we choose to interact with others. If we truly want to enjoy this entire life, there must be a deep loosening around every fixed belief that we have about ourselves. If we want to free our minds from any prison it's in, start surrendering to some, something divine within you. This path will catapult you through the unknown so that you discover the vibrant, abundant realm of unlimited possibilities. The energy of control is an impatient, egotistic approach to life. The energy of control is an impatient, egotistic approach to life. It comes from a disconnected feeling that there is not enough time energy, money, or creativity for everything you want to manifest. A controlling person will try to push his or her agenda upon another in an attempt to make their desire manifest in a specific way and time. If we simply knew that everything our heart desired was destined to manifest at a certain future time and place, there would be no need to force our will over anyone or anything. We would simply enjoy the blessings that life is offering in this moment and not try to manipulate life to give us something more. If you were to look back in your life, it's interesting to see how the energy of control was born into your life. In our primal years, we had no need for control and naturally lived in harmony with life. As children, we were like sponges absorbing each moment with trust and were totally open to receiving all of it. We simply accepted each other and each life experience. We lived in a constant state of wonder, feeling a sense of awe about the universe and consistently curious about its creation. This was our natural state of being, and we didn't need to do anything to create it. As we grew older, 
we adopted more complex desires and thinking patterns. We realized that in order to achieve some of our desires, we had to establish some form of control over our mind and the outer world. We had to micromanage our experience of life, manipulate life in some way in order to get what we wanted. We learned about others how to get our needs met through their controlling methods. Perhaps they were being impatient, aggressive, demanding, cunning, manipulative, or deceitful in order to force the other person into following their lead. When we were growing up, we saw how pure willpower could force people to ignore their own internal needs and do things against their own free will. We were threatened by authoritative figures to do as I say or you'll pay the consequences. By encountering this for years, we unconsciously adopted this rigid controlling energy into our minds. We saw that when people used a more authoritative and firm approach, it was an effective way to get things done and people would have their desires manifest more quickly. Without deviation from the norm, Progress is not possible, Frank Zappa. If you spent much time in relationship with a hypercritical, fear-based, over-controlling, authoritative family member, boss, or teacher at school, you may have formed a tendency to become a submissive sheep or rebel against any form of control. You may also be approaching your life from a generally resistant, fear-based attitude and not know it. You may not have learned that you are the authority of your life and that those controlling people were simply misguided beings. They were deeply uneducated in the emotional communication department and simply didn't know how to connect with you in an intimate, loving, and heart-opening way. If you find yourself, or when you find yourself, battling with feelings of being controlled by others, or being too controlling of others, or feeling a need to always control yourself, your mind, or your emotions, here's a few good questions to ask yourself. Why do you need to be in control? Why do you need to be in control? What would, what would be more, what would give you, what, what would more control give you in life? Is it possible to manifest that without having more control? How do you feel when you let go of control and can relax about your life? When you find the answer to each of these questions, you may feel it is the secret passageway to locating your greatest gold mine. However, when you keep digging, you'll discover the real gold comes from understanding that your true divine essence is naturally, naturally, naturally uncontrollable. And this is when you start to become the real master of your life. Mastery comes from realizing that the only thing we have, any any, any real control over is how we respond to life, this life, and each new moment. When we are relaxed and centered in our hearts, we have the ability to fully respond consciously and with love. It's easy to see how the attachment to any belief, thought, person, or agenda only results in more misery and suffering. By choosing to live each day from a place of truth, honesty, simplicity, love, trust, and gratitude, we have found the highest path we can take. We can truly be free from the mind's need to control and relax. If, when, this glorious moment ever occurs for you, then it's a sign that you have grown deeply. You've reached deep inside, deep enough inside yourself. You'll get beyond the mind's childish need for manipulation. 
you are becoming a mature, responsible, and empowered human being who lives with real, real, real integrity. The person who feels disempowered is simply unaware of their relationship with control. They may get stuck in in a complaining habit about their world, only focusing on what they don't have or is not working the way that it should. Once that person accepts that they are fully responsible for each experience they are creating, they start ignoring the controlling attitude that is not working and start going with the flow of life instead. Control, excuse me, control is one of those experiences that you must find a healthy, balanced relationship with in order for you to find happiness inside yourself. The problem is that many of us never look deep enough inside ourselves beyond our faults, frailties, and failures to revel in the light of the amazing beings we all truly are. Once we create a healthy relationship around control, we stop focusing on what's lacking and decide to spend our lives appreciating the simple goodness of being alive. Then we can relax and fully relish this awesome life. When we realize that everything we manifest comes from what we dwell upon, We become more devoted to meditating on feelings that make us feel more enthusiastic, empowered, aware, and abundant inside. The first step on the journey to releasing control and really enjoying our life begins with the decision to finally trusting in life. You realize the universe was always behind the scenes conspiring in your favor and supporting you to manifest your every desire and need. It's within this sacred realization, knowing the universe is our most intimate friend and ally, that we take a giant leap of progress along the spiritual path and can and can relinquishing our ego's constant need to be in control. To reach the highest levels of trust, trusting life. Start with focusing on your breath and its connection to the source of who you are. Feel within each breath. You're inhaling the entire universe into your heart and then releasing it into the infinite cosmos above. Let each breath be an experience of relaxation and expansion. Notice if any awareness arises that a highly intelligent energy and consciousness is weaving through you and everything around you. Give yourself permission to relax. Feel that something magical has been guiding your life from the day you were born. When you feel it, rest inside this space as long as you can. And know it will always be there to show you how to create even more pleasure, joy, and success in your life. The next step to releasing control is to practice trusting the feeling of your inner guidance. Listen to how this divine guidance is constantly informing your intuition as much and as which is the best path for you to take. Notice what trusting your inner knowing feelings feels like inside your heart. Be aware how the sensation is showing up throughout your body. When you're trusting your intuition, notice how your heart opens and expands. Trusting yourself is the most positive life affirming direction you can take. Just let yourself trust whatever speaks to your heart and surrender to that which is inherently good and feels good inside you. In being totally free from the controlling habit, it's important to understand 
that your soul is always connected to the highest source of love. Your soul is always in close communication with this healing energy, constantly downloading you with what you're most needing to hear. When you trust that this connection is, is there 100% of the time, you'll notice a deep feeling of relaxation shows up through your body. The inner guidance and relaxation you receive will override the fearful, worried, controlling mind. And deep down, there will be a feeling of coming home. There will arise a natural knowingness that life, this life, is good. And it yearns to give your heart expansive, mind-opening experiences. Or whatever it is you're looking for. The one you are looking for is you, always has been. You are the traveler. You are the destination in experiencing the ecstasy of your own being. You have achieved the final goal, ultimately. Whenever we feel controlling energy, we are unknowingly choosing, unknowingly choosing to live in fear. Whenever we feel controlling energy, we are unknowingly choosing to live in fear and have forgotten how good it feels to simply trust. We have become accustomed to living in anxiety, constantly afraid that some undesirable end result will manifest if we loosen our grip on the situation. We believe that if we relax for just one moment, we'll pay the consequences later in some way. Whenever our fear-based controlling mind has become the driving force in how we interact with this life, we're simply tolerating a life of tension and creating a neurosis. We don't realize how easy and good it is to find real joy by choosing a higher spiritual path of surrender. The level of fear we experience in almost any 48-hour time frame is a good measure for how Height, our grip has become on the handlebars of this grand roller coaster adventure called life. The amount we are able to trust in life is reflected by how little we feel the need to control it out of fear. The amount we are able to trust in this life is reflected by how little we feel the need to control it out of fear. It often happens that the instant we let go of fear, we have a greater need to trust in something bigger. And conveniently, when we truly trust in something bigger, we instantly let go of fear. When we initiate a big step towards releasing our need for control, an extra level of anxiety will initially arise, and we are forced to increase our trust vibration. Each time we abide in the feeling of trusting in this all-loving universe, we are creating a deeper understanding about the sacred loving nature of existence. Life is a continual process of awakening to the divinity inside ourselves and understanding how we continuously create our own reality. It just happens. The moment you practice letting go of control in one area of your life, your mind attempts to control a different area instead. The bulimic teenager who feels unable to feel in control around her alcoholic parents turns to having control over her intake of food instead. Wherever the mind can find control is where it thinks inner peace is found. The truth is inner peace cannot be found in the mind. Only when the mind is quiet and still is true peace realized. The mind can be a slippery trickster, and unless it's trained every day, it will tend to choose the easier path of remaining in control and retain its comfortable addiction to being in control. For the rational, healthy person, the desire for pleasure is the desire to celebrate his control over reality. For the neurotic, the desire for pleasure is the desire to escape from reality. Nathaniel Brandon, if you or when you feel you are someone who is a true control freak, 
and deeply needs to learn how to relax and enjoy this deeply loving eternal life, you must choose to first realize how painful it is to always have to be in control. There needs to be a physical, mental, and emotional recognition that a controlling attitude yields more pain than pleasure. The pleasure you receive from letting go of control has to be greater than the go payoff you get for remaining in control. When you realize by loosening this incessant grip your mind has on life, you instantly begin experiencing more joy, bliss, and happiness than you ever have in your entire life. Then, letting go becomes a very easy decision to make. You simply choose trust over control because it feels so good to resign from being the general manager of your universe. It is through following this truly good feeling that you ultimately find a deeper state of trust and the divine guidance that's following and flowing through you. Life is like the most wild road trip across the world's most radical terrain. You can either relax and enjoy the ride or see it as some long, painful, fear-based journey that we must all survive. Whenever you choose the path of fear, you'll find you have a tight, white-knuckled grip on life's steering wheel. If your life tends to feel this way every day, it's best to try keeping one good, strong finger on the wheel. Keep your eyes on the road right in front of you. Don't look in the rearview mirror and just focus on relaxing into your seat. You'll soon find that you can gently direct this amazing vehicle towards the destination of your greatest dreams and sing a few songs that you love along the way. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are, and the first thing that we care to do is relax these bodies that we are in, head to toe, inside and out. Remember this body that you're in, because you are not the body, is like a super powerful magnetic sponge and it draws everything. Anything the ego mind conjures up, the body feels. And it just absorbs it and collects it and collects it and collects it through the ego mind and the subconscious mind. So how do you how do you move the body into relaxation? The breath. You focus on your breath. Easy in through the nose, easy out through the mouth. And you listen to your breath. And when you do this, and you become still, focused just on the breath, the body begins to let go and relax. Let go of things. When, when you understand that the fear, the anxiety, the stress, the worry are all generated from thoughts. It's where they, that's, where they, that's where they emanate from. And the interesting thing is, is that thoughts are nothing until they, we give them something. We, we, we empower the thoughts so that we bring the thought into reality and then we experience the thought as reality. Now you could look at a thought of fear Right? And you can really look at it. Walk right up to it, give it a full body hug. You say, I love you, fear. Thank you for coming into my life. There's no, there's no reason for you to be here anymore. Boom. And it's gone. Now, obviously, the ego mind is going to come back at you, any of us, create more fear. It's just that we, this, we're, we're in this cycle. We, you know, we... A lot of us don't know we're in this cycle. And then when another fear comes up, you walk up to the fear, you give it a full body hug, you say, I love you, fear, but I no longer need you here. Boom, gone. 
you may have to do this, you may choose to do it, 50, 60 times a day, depending on where you're at with this controlling thing of your life. It's, it, it's like, have you ever been in a situation where you say, I'm out of control, I've got to, I've got to slow down, I've, I've, got to, I've got to control this, my life here, I've got, I've got to get things under control. Instead of just going with it, letting it go, going with the flow. See, the difference between those two decisions right there, where you feel hurried, flustered, you know, you're, you, you feel out of control, and then the fear comes in, and you, you know, I gotta, I gotta get myself under control here. That is fighting the current. When you just say, "Ah, oh, the heck with it! I'm just gonna let things flow." That is going downstream. Okay, that's letting the current take you. You really don't care where it's gonna end up, where it's gonna take you. You just know it's going to be another phenomenal adventure. So the breath is the magic. The breath has always been the magic for these bodies. Focuses us, relaxes us, eases us. And the breath stills the ego mind, the subconscious mind stills it which means we're not in it we're not interacting with it that's why the, 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 the mind chatter that we all have just gone disappears we can't we can't have the mind chatter yesterday or, or tomorrow because it's all in the now and we're in the now and we're only focused on one moment to moment each breath There's nothing else that we are thinking about, see? We're not thinking. We're just focused on the breath. This is the true path, the true gateway to freedom and discovering the gods that we are within these bodies. Now, it's important that we also practice being gentle, kind, generous, and humble with ourselves at all times. Also being in the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal gratitude. No matter what is going on outside of us, around us. Remember, we're in a vortex, we choose to be. And in that vortex, the center is peaceful, quiet, serene, loving, joyful, and blissful at all times. Now, some of us get seduced by the ego mind and we'll jump into that fray. We'll jump into that storm raging around us. Why would we want to do that? The ego mind will trick us and then we jump into the storm. But you know what? You can focus on your breath, be back in the now, in that peaceful, blissful, joyous, center. You've been in the center of a storm, a big, big hurricane. And you, you end up coming into the center of the storm. And it's completely still. Nothing's moving. It's completely quiet. It is a deep, peaceful experience. Yet, raging around that peaceful center is this massive storm of destruction. Why would we care to step into that? By focusing on the breath, we are able to master, we begin to master the ego mind and the subconscious mind. We watch what they do. We don't judge them. So we learn how to manage them, how to master them. Now, 
Now we have, ourselves, we give out over 60,000 thoughts a day. We, we, we send them out to the universe. doesn't mean that we're all consciously aware of every single thought that we send out, because we're not. It makes life more interesting. In addition to that, most of us don't know that we have tens of millions of thoughts flying by us like clouds in the sky. These are programs. They're other people's thoughts, believe it or not. They have accumulated on this planet for hundreds of thousands of years. And they're flying around, right? And they pass in front of all of us. And if we're in ego mind base, we end up grabbing those. Because we're not in the now, we're either in the, in the past or the future. So we grab that thought, we give it energy, we, bring, we move it into form, we create it into reality, and we experience it. But a lot of times you'll be experiencing something and you'll know inherently through your heart mind if feeling will come in or be projected out. It says this isn't this just doesn't feel right. Because it wasn't your thought to begin with. And you remember we remember that our thoughts we send out. Anything that comes in, they're real tricky, real tricky, because they have our names on them, right? Even though we're not our names. And they have our names on them, so we say, well, this has got to be my thought. It's got my name on it. And so this is how we're tricked, bringing those thoughts into reality and experiencing it. And every time that happens, we can just very simply say to ourselves, I will focus on my breath and I will be in the now 3,000% of the time, which is every time. It's practice. It is a choice for all of us. It's a choice. There's no one there with a, with a baseball bat over your shoulder saying, do this now. It's you. It's up to you. No one else. Because eventually, this entire civilization of this planet will choose to be in the now. I mean, we've all been in the past. We've all been in the future. We've all lived fear-based at times. We've all lived uncontrollable at times. All these things. I don't think any of us are exempt from it. But it's how we learn. It's how we master this life. And we don't need to control it. We just flow with it. Because we have the deepest trust in the universe. Our best friend has our back at all times. And we have the deepest, truest trust about ourselves, with ourselves. We have no doubt. The doubt pulls us up, pulls us down from the constant stream of abundance that every single one of us is receiving, every split second, infinity and beyond. But yet, under the ego mind's control, under its supervision that's supervising us, It creates turmoil, fear, worry, stress, anxiety. Never enough, never enough, never enough. Now picture yourself standing in front of three gold circles, paths, if you will, right? And you're standing in the center one. And you look to your left, you see another one, which is the past. And you look to your right, you see another one, which is the future. Now, you look at these paths, and you see that these trees have formed canopies over all three paths. And these trees are shimmering gold. The leaves are they're just glowing and shimmering, bark, branches. And then you look at the path itself, and you see this very bright, brilliant, vibrant, emerald green flaming grass looks like grass. And you try, you're, you're trying to say, well, what's the difference between these paths? Well, the one on the left, the past, is, you, you notice it's very worn. And the one on the right, the future, is very worn. But the one you're standing on in the center is like brand new. You see, the ego mind does not want us to go into the now. It knows that if it does follow us into the now, it's no more. It's not needed. It can't be. You can see why it has such a tug of war with us and constantly trying to keep us in the future or the past. 
it, it fights for its own survival. Now we all go into the past. We reminisce. We have memories. It's fun. This one will be a fun thing. And and no matter where we're at, it it it, it kind of triggers it. We could be driving, listening to music, talking to friends, or just being in a specific place. And it comes over us. And we like to kind of review wonderful times in our lives. So we have our libraries, which is the subconscious mind, which absolutely copies everything, copies and stores everything. Not only what you do, but what everybody around you does too, since you were in a baby body and to the present now. So you go up there, you open the door, you turn on lights, you go to the shelves, you pick out a few movies, some books and pictures. And you go sit in the easy chair and you watch the movies, read the books and look at the pictures. And you reminisce, this was a really good time. I really enjoyed this. I'd really like to do that again. And then you'd look at other times in your past where you say, "Uh uh-uh, I've done that and it didn't, wasn't favorable for me. So I'm not going to do that again. I learned some things. Great. That's it. Now, during this time, we eventually we'll take all the, the books and the pictures and the movies, put them on the shelf, we'll turn off the light, walk out, shut the door, move forward in this life. And on occasion, we revisit. But some of us, though, will, and I don't believe it's conscious, I believe it's unconscious, will stay there so long that we end up bringing that past into a future that doesn't exist create that future from that past and relive that past in that future. This is why people will say, no matter what we do, we always end up here. Now, we all go into the future because we want to know things. We want to we see if our life's going to be better or am, or am I going to have more money or am I going to be healthier? And, you know, when am I going to be happy? You know, and it's on and on and on, many different things. And when we go into that future, we're, we're creating the future in the now. Each of us are. And so when we go into a future that's pretty much a blank, we then look for external authority to tell us, to give us information that's going to tell us what's going to happen in our lives. You know, what? can you imagine, right, If you had a way to view your future, that'd be pretty interesting, wouldn't it? So you'd view your future, and what you would not know is, as soon as you viewed your future, you would have already changed it. Okay? So you, by looking at your future, it's connected to this timeline, you would already change that future, so it wouldn't be the way that you were watching it the way it was. Why is that? Because we create our future in the now. We focus in the now. We stay in the now. This allows us to go through the journey within and not without. So we always stay within. We focus on the breath. We stay in the now. And eventually, we master the ego mind, and then it's no longer needed. We master the subconscious mind as our library. We keep it clean and spacious. Now, you you know you're not the body. You're not the character. You're not the personality. You're not your name. You're not your your, your status in life. You're the God. So when you look at that body and you see seven lights, Uh, running from the tailbone to the top of the head. And these lights are nothing like the colors you see on this planet. They're much more vibrant, deeper, and expansive. And each one's a different color. And what the heck are they? They're etheric spirit energy. Spirit etheric energy, however you want to put it. Same energy that we are made of, the gods that we are. Omnipotently powerful. On this planet, they're called chakras. What's the definition of chakra? In a nutshell, wheel. 
These are wheels of light. We travel through them. We connect to this entire body. And that means all of the body's emotions, fears, tensions, stresses, anxieties, everything, all the organs, blood flow, everything. Right down to the quantum quark. Many of us on this planet have no clue that eventually we will discover with our journey within that we're the power of healing. We will be able to heal these bodies we're in in the blink of the eye. They know exactly where to heal. Now, we know that we have parts of ourselves, the gods that we are, that are asleep. We deeply love them because they are parts of us, but they will decide when they will awake in their own time and choosing. And we also have parts of ourselves that are awake, consciously aware to a certain extent. What is consciously aware? That means that we know, we know through our heart mind that we are of and from the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. Now, separation is such an illusion for all of us. It's pretty tricky. We would think that the parts of us that are billions of light years away are separate from us not true. It's the opposite. We're all one. We're all one. One huge body of energy branching off and experiencing every physical form it possibly can. Right? Inhabiting every physical form. Creating those physical forms so that we can inhabit them and experience them. And the numbers are in the Googleplex. As the Googleplex fills this universe with not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. These are trillions of Googleplexes coming from trillions of universes. This is all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. This is the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes, the ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Buddha. El Morga, Abedantia, Pel, Ba, Yala, Yeshua. All the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, Agartha, and beneath earth. All the off-worlders, galactics, celestials all of our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. Now, because of the body, the, these bodies and the eyes we have with them, we only see 1% of what is. We don't see the light spectrum beings, the, the ones that are in the red and infrared, violet and ultraviolet, green and ultra-green, blue and ultra-blue. We don't see those. They come, they come in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations. But there is a group that we are very familiar with, and parts of this group we are intimately, these bodies, are intimately dependent upon. The fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, trees, the trolls, the magics, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, and others. Now, you ask your body, can you continue to operate without water, without air, without fire, without earth, without ether, without wood? And it's a big no. We would have to leave these bodies if they weren't, if they didn't have access to that. 
Do you see how intimately these bodies are connected with those elements being wielded on this planet? Now, the Ascended Masters, they have ascended into physical form, have mastered physical form, they have ascended out of physical form, and they hold pure consciousness God form. We have ascended into physical form. We are in the process of mastering physical form. We are creating our experiences to perfect our creations. Now, the archangels, the cherubim and the seraphim, the archetypes, their civilization vibrated a different frequency than we do. Obviously, why we don't see them like we see each other. But we do meet with them. And the gods within them and the gods within us are one. And we meet with them in the strangest, you know, it's not like you're planning to meet one. You just... It just happens you interact with somebody, stranger or something, carry on conversation. It's like old home week. And then it just dawns on you after the conversation. Usually it's after the meeting, the interaction. And you say, that was an angel. And you feel bliss. You feel a little bliss. And, it can, you know, the, these interactions are, they've been going on for tens of thousands of years. And, you know, you could be thinking, I could really use some help with this. And somebody comes out of nowhere and helps you. And they have a message. And they've been delivering this message for eons. And you, you, you learn what the message is after a while. Isn't it absolutely magna glorious to be alive in these bodies? And it is. It's just that we all come into these bodies, we got quite a bit of amnesia. We don't remember, you know, who and what we were in, in the past, right? And so all we do is we enter these bodies, we have a residual memory, and then about five to seven years later, it's gone. And we have no reference point. And so we can't use our past life experiences to guide us through this life. So what happens is, is that we go through this life without any assistance of remembrance. So it could help us in some of the things we do in this current life. You see? And so therefore, we aren't in gratitude of these bodies. We aren't in deep gratitude. We just kind of take them for granted. Well, you know, here I am. And a lot of us think that we are the body, which is very far from the truth. Because when, you, you know, as gods, we don't drink, we don't eat, we don't sleep, we don't laugh, we don't cry, we don't make love, we don't hold hands, we don't kiss. We don't do any of that. We don't see through these physical eyes. We don't have belly laughs. We don't go on hikes. Okay? We don't go on drives or anything. Can you imagine that? Why do you think these bodies are so enticing for us gods to enter and experience? The, the physical plane is totally different. No, there's no comparison compared to the spiritual plane. None. And to be in deep gratitude for every single second you're in that body through the heart-mind is imperative to the well-being of that body and the length of time you have to spend in that body. We were taught that trees are the life, right? The tree only has life when the God enters the tree to give it life. 
The umbilical cord is the planet, the mother. The God comes in and takes over, just like the baby body. The mother supports it, her soul supports that body until your God enters it and takes over. Now they can surround any one of us at any one time in the tens of thousands or tens of millions. Reason is, is because their vibrational frequency, they can hold a large number in a small area. And if you want them to, they'll surround you. Just ask them. And they'll be there. And you'll be in bliss. Now the off-worlders, the galactics, and the celestials. Over a thousand species travel through this solar system every single day. Trillions throughout the universe is every day. We're familiar with a small group. Pleiadians, Syrians, Arcturians, Andromedans, Feline, Zeta Reticuli, Anunnaki, Nords, Greys, Draco, Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, Avion. This particular group has been assisting us in our evolution. Enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. Now, we're always gathered Conscious or unconscious. And the separation, again, is the illusion. So it doesn't matter if, you know, we're parts of us are a billion light years away, away. We're still one. So we're all gathered in full compassion, non-negativity, non-ego, non-judgment, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, prosperity, and abundance. And we're all one. We're all God. And we're all love. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And it continues to intensify, grow, and expand. We immediately form a white fire circle of light around the equator, equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. This white fire circle of light emanates from the gods within each and every one of us. Everyone inside these bodies. Which is pure love. It is the highest of the highest high frequencies. And it's bathing, saturating, and permeating this planet. All life, the highest supreme value in the universes. On it, in it, above it, and below it. There's no escape from this, this deep eternal love. It saturates, permeates, floods everything. 24-7, infinity and beyond, in this very moment, that we begin to ascend above the planet, we're immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. Now, we have a few ways to describe it. It isn't like any kind of ocean of glitter you would depict or see on this planet. It, it is, if you were to take a grand finale fireworks display, of which we've never seen on this planet, really, and a grand finale laser light show, and then a ballroom globe, that, you know, we know the ones that spin and they reflect all the light everywhere. Except this one's a trillion times larger and a trillion times more intense. Now, if you took all of those, combined them into one grand crescendo, that's about what we're seeing in the ocean of glitter. Now, we're curious, so we go to the reflective points. We see that they're tiny, microscopic, perfectly etched mirrors, so we enter them. And when we enter them, we discover that all of us and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, are learning and teaching, teaching and learning. We are teaching each other. We are inhabiting different physical forms. And we are showing each other how to enjoy this life. 
all the time. What, you know, we look at something and we learn that this is not what I would do. So it's showing me what not to do. It's like the, the, our pets are animals. They teach us how to forgive and forget. Go with the flow. Be happy. Don't try to control life. Let life just flow. And all of these animals, and it doesn't matter, not necessarily the animals, what about the rocks? What about the crystals and the diodes? What about all these? They're all teaching us. We're teaching them. This is, we are one grand design. And we are one body of deep eternal love. And we're all experiencing all of these experiences because parts of the one are inhabiting different physical forms to experience. And when, pe when we decide to choose to go within and stay within, and our journey begins within and ends without, then we start discovering these things. Then we take the time. Sit in a park. Or sit in your car and watch things. And not judge, but see what you'll learn in a matter of minutes. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all, the gods that we are within these bodies, that we are the power of healing. We are then met with the violet, blue, purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is the column of light that we created to remind us all, the gods that we are within these bodies, of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We are then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that from head to toe, 24-7, inside and out, infinity and beyond, we are protected. This white fire armor emanates from the God source within each and every one of us, the pure, deep, eternal love. This is the highest of the highest high vibrational frequencies. And it encases us in this white fire armor, unlike the armor on this planet, far beyond that. And so the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, and the demons, and all of these lower pools of low vibrational frequency cannot be near us. If they come at us, they'll vaporize. They know it, so they stay away from us. So we're always protected. Yet. Only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequencies low enough, whether consciously or unconsciously, through hatred, anger, fear, greed, envy, hurried, revenge, manipulation, deception, dishonesty, Worry, stress, you will create a breach in your white fire armor, enough so to allow lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come rushing in. And then all kinds of things are possible, even possession, attachments, all kinds of muckety mucks. Now, if you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with the, with the double column of light. The first part of this column we created is the purple transmuting flame. We created this part of the column to remind us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. Second part of this column is the violet ray. We created this part of the column to remind us all that we can bring in the violet ray. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony into the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, peace. We're then met with the golden white, pink light. 
This is the column of light that we created, the gods that we are, to remind us all that we're the sun, sunlight. We're the sunsets and the sunrises. We're the oceans, rivers, lakes, the streams. We are the rain and the rainbows. We are the animals. We are the trees and the forest. We are the skies and the clouds. Starry lit night sky. We're everything. Everything is us. Now, all of us have always looked at things in, on this planet and have said, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that spectacular? Try it. Start practicing through the heart mind, not the head. When you see a sunset or sunrise, that is the God that I am. That's the truth. That's who you really are. Everything is you and you are everything. You can focus on a physical form, even though you're in that body, and you can focus long enough on your breath and being in the now and being still, you would become that just briefly, to know what it's like to be that. We continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us step outside our physical form and hover effortlessly above it if we're carrying physical form. The reason we do this is because it's fun, and we can. We come into contact with this Massive crystal and light tower. We created this tower. It's larger than the solar system and beyond. Now, in the center of the column, we discover this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere is this golden white bowl of light. It is surrounded by numerous multicolored rings of light that seem to go into infinity and beyond. Now, this creates this super bright white, reflecting, glittering, like an electrical mist cloud. And it's absorbed right into our heart mind. And it feels like a warm embrace that never ends. We discovered that the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the highest, high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, and purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. Then comes well-being, gratitude gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, stupendous, miraculous, magna glorious prosperity. Stupendous, miraculous, magna glorious abundance. Now at the top of this column, we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees, as it's doing right now, 24-7, infinity and beyond. This is the purest of the purest, pure, deepest of the deepest, deepest, highest of the highest, highest, eternal love. And we're swimming in it, being saturated, permeated, flooded with it. There's no escape whatsoever. Now, we're drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. The golden ocean is the drops. The drops are the golden ocean. And the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. It's that center circle. We all created this sphere over four years ago. It holds over 1,800 of our meditations in perpetual motion. Hundreds of millions of us, consciously aware, on and off world, focused on this planet and its complete liberation from the dark, lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, period. The elimination of pure evil from planet Earth. Now picture that. Watch as it steams its darkness off the planet and vaporizes and the light of love. That's why this meditative sphere can be seen, heard, and felt 
and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. That's why it continues to intensify, grow, and expand. Now you tap into it, go into silence, focus on the breath, and watch it through your physical heart-mind. Find inner peace, being alone in the gateway to freedom. Finding inner peace, being alone, is the gateway to freedom and is the foundation of every spiritual awakening. So I invite all of us to take this weekend to completely, completely be alone and relax. Find a very quiet, peaceful place where you can simply be yourself and discover a deeper state of peace within. Eat healthy foods, take a nap, meditate, go for a long walk every day. Learn the sacred art of relaxation. Rest in your innermost being and enjoy the experience. I'll join you in the meditation and I'll return to close us out.
take an easy breath in through the nose and an easy breath out through the mouth. Focus on the breath. Stay in the now. For today, explore the perfection of duality. Notice there is both darkness and light within every person, thing, place, and experience. Get out a pen and paper and write down all of your biggest judgments and negative beliefs you have about other people. Then write down the opposite, positive aspect of each belief. Notice what happens when you see the divine balance within each negativity in your life. Explore and feel this divine balance within yourself today. What would your life be like if you only saw a divinely balanced, perfect state in everyone and everything. Remember, this universe is completely balanced, perfect, and divine. The negative judgments created from the mind make your world appear to be anything but that. Acknowledge the perfect balance that exists in this life. and Recognize this each time you judge yourself or someone else today. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and following morning. We will return here March 11th, Friday, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our Global Guided Meditation Call and 9 p.m. Eastern to continue our Reverse Aging Health 